She's an award-winning YouTuber and best-selling author obsessed with helping you go after the life you want. I like it. Join her as she seeks out the stories and strategies. Give me every little detail. Of extraordinary people who found success. I need to get emotional. Oh, my God. Welcome to Detail Therapy with Amy Landino. You can't be scared of uncomfortable situations. You have to be willing to step up and make your voice heard and make it make it heard in your way, right? If you're ultra feminine, that's okay. If you're, you know, name it. Like whatever whatever areas that bring diversity and make you you, you have to own it. Good morning, good life. Welcome back to Detail Therapy. You just heard a little piece of my conversation with Lisa Song Sutton. In this episode, we're talking about diversifying your life. Lisa has dabbled in literally every type of business venture, whether it's modeling or running for Congress. So we're gonna talk about what that's been like and how all of those areas of business and personal branding and all the things have played a role in her life. Life and following her passions. Also, giving back to the community. The best way to feel connected to the community around you is to do your best to bring your own personal type of value to it. What do you bring to the world that is valuable and how can you give back with that? We're going to talk to Lisa about how she has done that. And also, being a woman in a man's game. From politics to the workplace, we as women still have to prove ourselves and our worth. What has Lisa's experience in this been? We're going to talk about just that. We have a lot to get into today, but for those of you who are new to the show, my name is Amy Landino and I will be your host. I'm a YouTube creator, podcaster, business coach, public speaker, and best-selling author. I'm here to help you go after the life you want. You can find out more details by visiting youtube.com slash Amy TV. Well, happy December to you. Very exciting time here at Gatlu House, my business where we do all things videos and podcasts and media. And today we are counting down the moments to a book as well. If you have been under a rock <laughs> in this podcast experience, then you may have missed the fact that Good Morning, Good Life, the book, will be coming out on December 10th, which is just a week away from today. So we're actually going to probably chat a lot more about this next Tuesday, so I won't uh, nibble on your ear too much about it. But if you would like more details, I highly suggest you go to goodmorninggoodlife.com. This is a really... <laughs> wonderful moment coming to fruition. Lots and lots of steps and things and a book taking so long to come together and is finally happening. And I'm just like, I'm just over the moon. So it's a very holly jolly holiday season for me. I also want to give a big shout out to the sponsor of this episode of Detail Therapy, and that's our friends at Four Sigmatic. They're having a killer Black Friday sale at the moment. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later and why you might want to try some mushroom coffee. And finally, a quick shout out to our friends at MGM International. As you are probably aware, if you've listened to a lot of season three of Detail Therapy, I interviewed some fabulous women at the Women's Leadership Conference, and today is no change to that. Lisa was one of the fabulous women I got to sit down with, and my goodness, when you hear her resume, you're just going to be blown away and so excited about this chat. So keep in mind, we are in a lively environment. There might be a little bit of background noise, but I promise you it is worth it, so stay tuned. And uh, well, with that, let's just get into it with my next guest. Lisa Song Sutton is an American entrepreneur, philanthropist, and published writer. She has had just a ton of different experience in business, from real estate investing to even retail and food and beverage, including Las Vegas's number one alcohol-infused cupcake company, Sin City Cupcakes. Lisa currently writes and speaks about entrepreneurship and business, and no big deal, she was Miss Nevada of 2014. So with that, let's get into it with Lisa. Lisa Song, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Why do you do what you do? I love providing value to people, whether it's in the real estate industry, food and beverage, swimmer e-commerce, name the industry. I just really enjoy providing value and having a good time with it. I mean, and you, you're kind of been all over the place. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so you're former Miss Nevada, yes. 2014, right? Yes. And now you're running for Congress in Nevada District 4. Correct. That's like, a, that's a lot of different things. There's probably <laughs> been some things in between. Sure. 
how do you become Miss Nevada? Like, I, I don't know what this life is like. Like, how does that trajectory start? Yes. Well, so I have a modeling background. I modeled during college and grad school. Um, and so when I moved to Las Vegas, I moved here in 2010. And um, I was just, you know, working my day job at the law firm, started my first company in 2012 with Sin City Cupcakes and realized Nevada's home. This is where I have roots. You know, I have property here. I have businesses here. And I've always been someone who's involved in the community. That's something from a very young age my parents instilled in me. We always uh, did volunteering missions uh, throughout town. And, and so that was something that was important to me here. I wanted to make sure I gave back to the community. And through that, I saw an opportunity through pageantry to really um, kind of step it up and utilize the the Sash and Crown as a platform to bring knowledge and to bring attention to these nonprofits that needed some attention brought to them. So um, when I competed, I was the shortest contestant oh and God. the oldest in the Miss Division my year. Oh, wow. So two strikes, right, against <laughs> me. Um, and my first runner up the year that I won was the first runner up the previous year. So everyone said it was her time. Oh, you know, wow. She put in her dues. Um, she had a relationship with, you know, the executive so director. Were she knew everybody. you definitely not the favorite. Like, it I was, was the like, dark horse. Yeah, oh, wow. I was the dark horse coming in. And, and I was like, you know what? I just have to outwork everyone. And I need to focus on my strengths, right? So I, I'll never be five foot ten. As hard nope, as I try, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, as hard as I try. <laughs> um, and and I was like, okay, I'll focus on my strengths then, right? Um, I hired a pageant coach, and we just really drilled down and kind of took it apart the same way you do a business, right? Like, what are the actionable steps that you can take to get to your ultimate goal? If I want to win, what are the four areas of competition? <sighs> Swimsuit, evening gown, on stage question, and interview. They're all weighted evenly, twenty five percent. So if you really think about it and break it down. 50% of your score in the pageant is talking. Oh, you know, you stage question. You guys, are you mind blown now? Yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll try this. <laughs> I think I might just try to be Miss Ohio um, or something. I would might be rock too it. Old. I'm too it. Old. I'm too Do it. You old. would rock it. So, <laughs> interview an on stage question, right? And so I'm like, okay, if I can nail a 10 out of 10, yeah. right, on interview and on stage question, and if I can get, you know, an 8 out of 10 on swimwear and evening gown, I have a chance of winning. Yeah. Mathematically, I have a chance of winning. Oh as long gosh, as it's not rigged, wow. as long as it's a fair pageant, yeah, you know, sure. all those things, right? Where the so, rest of the world is probably saying, we got to do pretty good in all of those places. Sure. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, you, they're not, yeah. maybe not, th hopefully not. Like, you should be thinking about which ones can you get a 10 out of 10. Exactly. Because you can't win them all. Like, yeah, that's just a metaphor ideally, for life. Yeah, ideally, if you get 10 out of 10 on, on all of them, amazing, yeah, right? But, but like, like, focus in on your how strengths. How often does that happen? Like, so I was like, well, look, I'm not 5'10". I'll never be 5'10". And I don't have, I guess, the, the, the stereotypical, you know, 5'10 pageant body, right? Like, that's just not right. how I'm built. Right. So I'm not going to have that factor going into swimsuit. I just know I'm not. No. I know I'll be fit, right? And I'll... I'll feel like I look like my personal best. I'll feel good hitting the stage because I'll know I've like I've worked on my body. Right? right, right. But you're training. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, so mathematically, I, I have a chance. I then, love right? this, how you broke that down. That's great. And and so that's what we did. Obviously, you know, I ate right and, and picked a swimsuit that was, you know, flattering to my, my body and skin color and all that kind of stuff too. But we really, really drilled interview and on stage question. The very first time the judges meet you is in interview. It's not when you hit the stage. They meet mm. you the morning of in the private interview. And it's like this. It's a round robin style. And, and you're as close to the judges as yeah. the, how we're sitting right now. It's three minute round robin, a bit rapid fire. But the, all they have on you is your eight by 10 headshot and a two page bio. And maybe they've read it and maybe they haven't. Yeah, right. Right. It just They've got to get through a lot of girls. Right. right. So you have three minutes to get someone to connect with you. And hopefully get them to like you enough so that when you hit the stage that night, they're like, you know what? There was something about her. She was smart. Or I like this about her. Whatever it is. It's like a human connection, right? And so I'll hit the stage and I'm not five foot ten. And maybe the girl ahead of me was, but maybe she was totally vapid in interview, mm -hmm. right? Maybe she was like totally aloof. Or mm -hmm. maybe they asked her, you know, what are you going to do if you win? And she was just like, I don't know. Like maybe she had some stupid answer. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. so even though she looked amazing in swimsuit and they might give her a 10 in swimsuit, maybe they tanked her an interview because they were just like, I don't see it with her. You this know? is fascinating. Like we look at this as the consumer of, of content and we say like, okay, this is a thing where women get judged in swimsuits and dresses sure. and that's it. You're going into being judged by talking first, by being yourself yes. first or being at least the greatest trained version of yourself talking Correct. first. Yes. 
there's, I feel there's so much more like, like, depth in this than initially like somebody might assume because all we see is the showiness right Right. but you've already had a hopefully impactful conversation with somebody for at least your best three minutes ever right in order for them to think you're memorable because quite frankly all of you are in great shape all of you have been working on your bodies in every way possible you just have to be on your a game it's all about what makes you individually different correct so good yeah. So, so that's, that's what I did. Yeah. So that's what I did. So I went in and and I knew that if I were to win, the experience that I wanted to have with it was that I wanted to make just the biggest impact in the community that I could. That was like the promise that I made to myself. I was like, so, you know, some girls, everyone competes for a different reason, right? Some girls want a modeling contract. Some girls right. want to become an actress. Some, you know, whatever it is. And everyone has their own idea of, of what they want to do after they win. So that's fantastic, right? So for me, like I said, I made a promise to myself look, like I'm going to use this to get myself out here in the community, make it known that this is where I'm willing to give back and I want to spend my time doing that. So let's do it. And, and so I did over 500 community appearances in 18 months between Miss Las Vegas and Miss Nevada. Wow. It was a super aggressive schedule, but I designed it that way. Yeah. I wanted it to be about the community. And so I, every nonprofit under this sign, like saw my face, you know, I got a chance to volunteer everywhere. And I was volunteering in schools, reading in hospitals with the sash and crown, you know, and, yeah. and, and it was just, it was just such a fulfilling, ex- purposeful experience for me. And fast forward, I mean, that was in 2014. Fast forward, I still run into people to this day that remember me from that time period. I still get Instagram DMs from kids that I met, you know, they were in junior high and I came to speak to their school. Like, like I'm still involved in that community. And it's because of the time that they saw me out in the community giving back. Did you know when you were in the pageant, when you were competing, that you were thinking about running for office someday? Or did something occur to you during all that community service that made you realize that you could do something more? So with politics, it was never in the plan, even though it's so funny because hindsight's always 2020, right? Absolutely. So I was a poli sci major in undergrad. I interned for Senator John McCain when I was in undergrad at U of A. This was in like 05. So well before his presidential run, he was just, you know, an amazing U.S. senator. And and that was my first taste of you're in an office, you're working with constituents. People are either calling or coming into the office and they have a very specific problem and you have to route them to whichever government agency is going to help them out. Right. So that was my first taste of that. And then I realized, you know, fast forward. I'm Miss Nevada. I'm out meeting people. I'm talking to people, talking to the community, and they're telling me about their problems, and then I'm figuring out which nonprofit to route them to, right? So, so mm. there's been a lot of the same kind of um, community assistance, public servant type of ties, and yet I didn't I didn't put it all together until last year. Um, so I've got a couple of different business in t- businesses in town, and one of them is Ship Las Vegas, which is a mailbox rental packing and shipping store. And we opened our second location last year, and we opened it in an area of Northeast Las Vegas that, um, you know, vacancies on both sides of us, uh, an area of town that I have friends who work for Metro for the police department, and they were just like out of concern. They were like, Lisa, don't open up here. Like, it's, it's a dangerous area. We call this the triangle. It's the longest lead times, uh, a lot of calls. You, know, just, you don't need to open here. Like, just don't open here. And and that's what, you know, they told that, told me and told us. And I was like, okay, thanks, guys. Thanks for the vote of confidence, you yeah. know. And, um, I mean, we checked out the neighborhood, and um, it did. It did have a lot of, of crime in the area. And I had a discussion with staff. I talked to my parents, and I was like, look, like, let's, let's give it 60 days. If we get robbed in the first 60 days... I'll just shut the, the store down. Like, this is silly. I'm not going to put people at risk, you know. And so we opened the doors. And the very first customers, the day we opened the doors, were these two little old ladies of the apartments across the street. And they were so excited to have a place to buy stamps. <laughs> it was like these, like, old school ladies. They pay their utility bills with a check and an yeah. envelope and a stamp, right? Yeah. So they need, a, one, a place to buy stamps. And two, a place to securely mail out their, their mail, yeah. right? Without us, without our store... They have to take a bus. They don't drive. They have to take a bus to the closest post office, which is on like East Cary for them, which is like so far. It's like a half day's journey on a bus. It's unreal. So that that set the tone for our presence in the neighborhood. That store has now been open almost 18 months. Wow. And, you know, knock on wood, 
We haven't had a single, we haven't been robbed. We haven't been vandalized. We haven't had our windows broken in like other buildings. We haven't had graffiti on our, on our doors like other buildings. And it's because we've set the tone with the neighborhood of letting them know, hey, we're here to help and we're here to provide value, right? We're here to sell you stamps and copies and notary and, you know, just, just and provide And all a, you a can do is be that version of you no matter what. Mm-hmm. If, if, if something were to happen, God forbid, mm-hmm. It's not on, it's not your fault. Mm-hmm. It's something that someone else is like going through and it, this is their choosing a ch- chosen outlet and and we just hope that that would never happen. Mm-hmm. But what good does it do us to say like, oh, this is probably going to happen. So like we shouldn't even go there. You're, yeah, you're don't taking even away go from there. a community. Right. You know, that's that that doesn't help anybody. That doesn't help right. anybody. I totally agree. Yeah. And so I'm I'm so glad that we you know, put ourselves out there and was just like, you know what, let's just see what happens. Yeah. Let, let's be safe about it. You know, we've got the security cameras and all the things, you know, but we're like, let's be safe about it. But we have to at least try. Yeah. We have to at least try. And yeah. if things go sideways, then they go sideways, but we have to at least try. Yeah. And so like I said, that's at the town. But then it made me realize, you know, being in there and speaking to our customers and just asking simple questions like, Hey, so where do you guys buy your groceries? Because like I said, vacancies on both sides of us. And I noticed, you know, driving down Craig Road, there's no grocery store on Craig Road. And it's pretty far from the, the 15, which is the highway. So I'm like, well, this is how far I drive. And like, I have a vehicle, right? I'm not on public transportation. So I asked, you know, where do you get your groceries? And they're like, oh, we buy them from 7-Eleven. We buy them from the Mini Mart. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. You know, and so. So I started making some calls and and I called around to, um, you know, different elected officials offices and look, I'm sure they're busy. I know they've got a ton of other things going on, but basically I was getting the same answer, which was, you know, we have competing priorities and, you know, thank you for letting us know. And thanks for, you know, trying to help out the community. And that was that. Um, So like that, that was something that was weighing on me and it was just something I'd noticed and just realizing there's just a lack of resources in general Mm. in the area. Um, and then one of our, our business neighbors, um, is the VFW. Um, my dad's a Vietnam veteran military, like near and dear to my heart. Um, and so, you know, the guys from VFW, they always pop in, come say hi. And, um, there was a a period over Thanksgiving where, you know, they needed some assistance with boxes to get frozen turkeys out to their vets. And I just really felt like there was more that the community could have done. Like, you know, they didn't. I didn't, I didn't feel like they had enough infrastructure there to help mm. them out. And in speaking to, you know, some friends of mine who are elected officials and they were just like, Lisa, like there's a way to put in a veteran affairs office in that area for, for as close as it is to the VFW and the VA, you know, like, and the base, there's a military base right there. Like there's a way to put in a veteran affairs office in that area that could really assist that VFW. Like there's mechanisms for this kind mm-hmm. of stuff. You know, you just have to be in the position to be able to do it. Right. right. And that's when I was like, okay, I need to, I need to take stock of what I can do in the position that I'm in. Right. Mm. And there's only so much we can do as like one store. Right. And if this is the type of problems that are in this community, what other problems are out there that, that could theoretically, you know, be addressed if there was an opportunity to really just kind of hone in on them and, and provide cohesive help. And that's how this all started to kind of come together of, of, this amalgamation of perfect storm of set of circumstances, yeah. right? Of you see a need in the community. There's a bit of an open window to possibly run. There's an open window to have the right team help you with it. And for as crazy as our current political climate is, an opportunity for a fresh face. Yeah. An opportunity for someone who's new to politics. And that's what the community likes. The community likes not not having a perennial candidate, not having a career politician who's been in the same position for 20 years. They don't want that. The community the doesn't want that. the same old that. guys in the same game. The community doesn't want that, and they're seeing that. Mm-hmm. And so because of the state of the current political climate, as a result, it's allowed this kind of new crop of fresh faces to appear Yeah. and say, you know what? I'm not a career politician, but I care about the community. And I feel very confident that I would be able to help. Yeah. I'm curious because I think we're seeing a lot of this and um, the the political landscape is changing, not just because people are really realizing a lot more what they actually want from their leaders, but we're starting to see more women step up. 
I, I guess I'm curious because of that. How has it been in, I know you're, you're now on this campaign and you're hoping to achieve that seat, but even in your past experiences as well, what it's like to be a woman in sort of like a man's game. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, I'm sure that there's a lot that you have to deal with on that front. And I'm curious what that looks like for you. It's interesting because even though politics is a new industry for me, there are the same lessons that are in place. There's right? always the same problems. It's wherever the same you go, lessons. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> when you're when you're a woman in a male dominated industry, so whether it's food and beverage, whether it's real estate, whether it's e-commerce, whether it's retail, whether it's politics, right? There are still certain things that we as women will just have to simply answer for that other people don't, right? I've done a ton of interviews where they ask me. Oh, so you're 34 years old and you're not married. You don't have any kids. Okay, before we get into that, I have to talk to you about one of my favorite brands for mental health and caffeine. And that's my dear friends at Four Sigmatic. Four Sigmatic believes in the real magic of functional mushrooms like reishi, chaga, cordyceps, and lion's mane, as well as other superfoods to help us live healthier, more enhanced lives lives. Okay. I do not like eating mushrooms. If you've not gotten the memo from me yet, every time I talk about Four Sigmatic, I like to say that first because there might be this misconception that their drinks and their different elixirs taste like mushrooms. Mm -mm, Definitely not, especially their coffee. It literally just tastes like coffee, but you're getting so many more benefits from it. So drinking mushrooms is no big deal when you have these superfoods blended in such a delicious drink. They have mushroom coffees. They have mushroom superfood blends. They have mushroom elixirs, but no taste of mushroom. Not to mention the fact that these products are all organic, vegan, gluten-free, and instant. Shout out to the fall season. We love a warm cup of the mushroom coffee latte. Definitely want to give a shout out to that. Usually I drink my coffee black. There's definitely an option for that, but this is kind of when you want that treat during the colder months perfect. Why in the world would you want to drink anything that is of the mushroom (laughs) blend? Well, it's a very, very good question. And here's what I have to say about it. First of all, mushroom coffee with lion's mane is the thing that I drink on a regular basis. And the reason for that is productivity. That's right. They have a product directly aligned with improving your productivity. And that's because this, this actual product helps you with focus, creativity, memory, concentration, and brain health. So it's something that you're going to want to have before you're going to work, or maybe when you're having that slump in the afternoon a little bit. Studying, it's very good. So it's kind of like giving your brain an energizing hug, which is awesome. If you're more looking for something that's going to set you up for an active day or an active type of moment, like going to the gym, they definitely have a great option for that too. And that's the mushroom coffee with cordyceps. So this is more for performance before a physical activity or a pretty busy day. This is a super exciting time to be online shopping because as you know, it's that Black Friday time of the year. And so the cyber sale for Four Sigmatic is going on right now. And so you can try one of their products or many of their products for a huge discount through December 5th. If you haven't been online lately or checked your email, then you may not know that it's that Black Friday time of year. So you definitely want to check out Four Sigmatic's Cyber Sale if you want to give their products a try. Right now you can get them for 20 to 50% off. And if you use the link specific to those who listen to Detail Therapy, you can get an additional 15% off. So all of that will be linked in the show notes. Make sure you apply that discount code so that you can get that additional 15% off. The link for you to use is in the show notes. And again, I mean, 20 to 50% off plus 15%. There's no way you're going to try this coffee any cheaper than that. So if you don't like coffee, check out their elixirs, check out their skincare. They have so many things coming out, uh, but definitely take advantage of that mushroom life, my friends, without actually eating mushrooms because super not into that. All right. Now back to my conversation with Lisa. (laughs) Like, great. That's a what question to come. Know? Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> that's right. You know, and like, those are all facts. Well, Thank and you. I just let them know that, you know, for me, I do want that in my future one day. I have a fantastic boyfriend who's very supportive. And so family down the road absolutely is something that I'm excited to have in my future. But I don't have that right now. And frankly, I think it's a strength because it frees up my time and it gives me the time and the bandwidth to be able to dedicate to this job to do it the way that I think it should be done effectively. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a strength. And, and 
that's the thing is knowing your strengths. Your mm-hmm. strengths aren't someone else's strengths. Correct. Everybody doesn't have to have the same strengths. You don't have to have the same strengths to be somebody in office that another person in office has. Mm-hmm. It's about knowing what yours are, leaning into them and gut checking that, mm-hmm. yeah, that this is the life plan that is working for me at this moment. I'm happy with this. Mm-hmm. And I, I have this goal. I'm trying to go after that thing. So I'm going to do that thing. And that's what I want to focus on right now. It's so much easier to be like, huh, what's the rest of the world doing at age 34? Oh, maybe I should be doing that. Should, mm-hmm. should, should. And we mm-hmm. should all over ourselves. And mm-hmm. it's like, why? Exactly. But everybody wants to be able to put you in a box. And yes. I imagine that that is a continuing theme in what you're doing right now <laughs> is how do we put her in a box so we can understand? Mm-hmm. And that is just one big, unfortunate way that it happens, mm-hmm. that that has to define how good of a candidate you would be, how good of, of a businesswoman you would be, how right. good of a woman you would be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not cool. Well, and I'm always just impressing it on, on other people and especially the women that I meet, right? It, you and I are, are very fortunate to be in circumstances where we have platforms available to us that we can reach a lot of women, right? And, mm-hmm. and get a chance to talk to them directly and just say, look, like, you can't be scared of uncomfortable situations. You have to be willing to step up and make your voice heard and make it make it heard in your way, right? If you're ultra feminine, that's okay. If you're, you know, name it. Like whatever whatever areas that bring diversity and make you you, you have to own it, right? And you you can't shy away of, of oh, well, I don't fit that box. So I need to either make sure I fit in that box or I shouldn't do it at all, mm. right? We constantly just have to remind ourselves that, our individuality is what makes us qualified for that job. It's yes. what makes us qualified to bring value to whatever that position is. So don't shy away from those things that make you who you are. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> okay, I have to ask you more about the details of your day, Lisa. Yes. Especially, like, they must be very interesting right now. <laughs> so starting with the morning, what time do you tend to get up and what does your morning routine look like? I generally get up sometime between 6 a.m. and 6.30 a.m. Um, I get up and um, I have two Welsh corgis named Kimchi and Cupcake. <laughs> yeah, they're the cutest. Oh, I love um, that. They generally just like to sleep in. Otherwise, I will like let them out in the morning first thing. But usually I'm up before them and they just kind of like lay in bed and they're yeah. like watching me get up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lucy used to be that way. Now she's like, she's my little alarm clock with a, with a heartbeat. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I just... I'll get up um, and and I have a morning routine where um, I like to text my parents in the morning and just say, hey, have a great day. It's just um, it, it's kind of like cheat gratitude journaling where it's like I start the day off with a positive intention. Ooh, I but love it's that. Just, it's a quick little and, you know, and, and I encourage people to do this. It doesn't have to be your parent. It could be whomever, whomever. Right. But just a quick little, hey, thought about you today. Have a great morning and like send it off. Yes. You know, just something yes. that's like starting with a positive note. And then. um you know, I, I take some time. I try to read for about 10 minutes. Um, I do a quick little workout. And by workout, I use the term workout loosely. <laughs> my, um, my boyfriend has so graciously wrote me this like workout. And it's basically, you know, like 10 push-ups, 10 sit-ups. I use like an armband. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's not a real workout by anyone's like regular definition, but it's enough for me. You do what you got to do. It gets do the you. blood flowing, oh, yeah. you know, and, and I do that. It takes me about 10 minutes. And then, um, and then I have a stationary time where like, I know it takes me like 24 minutes exactly to like do my face and like my hair, right? Like do my makeup. And I know that I'm stationary. Oh my God. That time. I love that. You know that <laughs> I need to know what my number you, is you because I'm always you like, Oh, know. it's going to take like two hours. No, no, no. <laughs> you should know. Right. And so it's like, if you didn't wash your hair last night, how long is it going to take you? Absolutely. Right? Like, Absolutely. It's, it's nice to know these things because then I know that I have a stationary set of time where either if I need to be on a conference call or if I need to just have nothing going on, just have music playing or whatever it is. But I know I'll have this like kind of 20 minute chunk yeah. where I'm just doing my, my makeup. Right? Got to get it done. Yeah. Reverse engineer the first appointment. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, do you listen to any podcasts or anything like that? Oh my gosh. So many. Um, what, what do you recommend? Yeah. Um, I mean, Gary Vee, of course. So good. When, when you need like a kick in the pants. Oh, for yeah. sure. Not, not every morning. Yeah, I don't I need Gary every day morning. anymore. Yeah, I, for sure. I don't need it every day. I don't want it every day. But it's so nice that you know it's always going to be there. It's there, there to for, kick for the you. kick in the pants, you know, <laughs> when I need that extra oomph. Um, definitely that. Gary Vee for that. Um, I like the Tim Ferriss podcast. Um, I like Joe Rogan. 
Yeah. I what I like about the Joe Rogan podcast is that he'll just bring on guests that I just frankly have just never heard. Absolutely. Of, right? He's and so I, and good I at may that. never hear of them ever again in my life, That's right? So true. But they come on the Joe Rogan podcast and I'm listening yeah. and and there's just really valuable nuggets being yeah. said, you know. So I like that a lot. Um there's one called the Fierce Fem Podcast. Um, there's so many good ones out yeah, there. There's a yeah. lot. That's good. Those are some good recos. Do you do some reading as well? Oh, and absolutely. Anything that you recommend that maybe yeah. like is a mindset shift for people or just something that you found super inspirational? Um, well, when I try to do that kind of like less than 10, 10 minutes or less of reading in the morning, um, I like the the Tim Ferriss um, Tribe of Mentors and Tools mm. of Titans because it's literally right. It's just like the little two pages it's of like so whatever good. podcast you, you break down. Just read right? about one person exactly in a two pages. And there's your there's your five minutes right. So and then good. you're like, this is good. This is good. Like actionable stuff. This stuff I can implement right now. And and you're done right. It's not an entire book that you have to get through that takes weeks. Yeah, love that. Does anyone inspire you when it comes to style? Oh my gosh, there's so many great. Um, I, I think you're, you're kind of traditional, like, like, especially with now I'm paying more attention to politics, right? Sure. So it's like Jackie O. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. It. Jackie O. Um, Melania Trump. Yeah. I think her clothing and her shoes, I mean, just, she's just on point, mm-hmm. just really stylish and yet very, very classy. intentional. Yeah. yeah very intentional. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Every piece, her jewelry, like it just, her accessories, like everything goes really, really well together. She looks beautiful. Love that. Uh, what resources do you tend to follow to get you through the day? So maybe like a calendar, a to-do list, a project management, whatever. Like, what are you looking at to get you from beginning of day to end of day just to stay on track? Yeah. So, um, right now there are two different calendars that are kind of running my life. One is my regular Google calendar that has just the stuff I need to do for my businesses and just kind of my personal calendar, right? Appointments with friends or dinners or whatever it is. Um, and then I've got our campaign calendar and on that it has not only my, um, campaign obligations, but then my fundraiser has his color on the calendar, mm-hmm, right? And mm-hmm. what calls I need to be making or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, my GC has his color on the calendar, which appointments I need to be taking my media, different color, uh, different color on the calendar. So yeah. that's, that's running, but it's nice to have, have everything right there visual. Love that. All right. Before I ask my final question, I would love for everybody to be able to follow your journey and see how all of this goes for you. We're wishing you the best of luck. Um, where can we follow you on social media? Yes, you can find me on all the social media, Twitter, social, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'm at Lisa Song Sutton. And in a few minutes, I'd like to challenge you to the secret podcast if you're up for it. I would love to. Um, this is all going to be at Shine Squad. So if you want to hear the secret podcast, go to patreon.com slash Amy TV. But before we do that, I'm going to ask you my final question, which is what does it mean to you to go after the life that you want? I think it's really drilling down your why, right? And, and that's something you can ask yourself for, you know, even the, the current job, if you have a nine to five job, right? What is your why? What are you working so hard for? Right. And is it family? Is it, is it to, to ultimately have a lifestyle that you want later? Is it to start a business? Like, what is it, you know, drill down your why. And that's going to really provide a lot of clarification for the projects that you set forward in the future. Lisa Song, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. All right, let's catch the deets from this conversation with Lisa. First, break down your process for achieving success. Lisa gave us the details of how she mathematically planned her way to winning Miss Nevada. I mean, that's amazing. Based on the scores that she knew that she needed to reach from the judges and just understanding where she needed to end up, she was able to plan out reaching her goal. Now, does this work every single time? No, but are you much more likely to make it happen if you try? Absolutely. Next, no matter where we go or what we do, it's so important to bring value to other people. Listen, I know introverts, it's hard to hear this sometimes. We got to connect with people. We got to bring value to people. We need to know people, lots of people and interesting people and different types of people if we want more success to come to our life. But certainly when you can show value to your community and give back to them. So think about what you have to offer and the things that you can do, even if that just means time, giving your time a little bit and give it a try and meet new people and give back to the community. You're going to meet so many more uh, people that will introduce you to opportunities if you're not just hiding behind that computer where you are hiding behind your podcast earbuds. Finally, embrace the things that make you, you. 
the things that make you stand out from others are the things that will ultimately carry you to success. You don't need to look like other people, sound like other people, be like other people, only present the value that other people present. You have your own thing. So bring it to the world, offer it, and be generous with it because it is going to come back in spades for you if you are patient and you keep going. That's all for this episode of Detail Therapy. You can actually listen to Lisa's secret podcast segment over in Shine Squad. That's at patreon.com slash amytv. I post a new podcast there just between one to five to sometimes maybe 10 minutes every weekday morning for the patrons over in Shine Squad. That's at patreon.com slash amytv. What do you think about getting more advice straight to those earbuds of yours? I'd love to share some simple steps for living your best life every day. And that's my free audio training the seven essential details for going after the life that you want. Okay, special, special details here for if you want this. You've got to get this audiogram by leaving a review, rate and review in Apple Podcasts. When you do that, screenshot that you did it and send that screenshot over to hello at detailspodcast.com. That's hello at detailspodcast.com. When you put audiogram, please, in the subject line and we see that fabulous review, no matter what your thoughts were or how many stars, whatever, it's you do you, we will get that audiogram right over to you. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. If you would like to discover even more actionable details, head over to Amy TV by visiting youtube.com slash Amy TV or visiting Amy TV in your YouTube app. Remember, subscribe for good vibes. Kiss the ones you love and go after the life that you want. Cheers.